For my new subscribers, body language is the whole body. When analyzing and coming to a conclusion, you should see multiple tells to verify your conclusion. I don't always point out every movement. It's just habit for me at this point. But I am making a conscious effort to point them out. The eyes don't always say deception. A visual thinker, an emotional thinker, and a memory-based thinker can look like a deceiver when compared to each other when they are not. The eyes are a good tool for seeing which area of the brain is being accessed. There is very good research on the brain for function and mapping. Understand by their own admittance, they are far from mapping or understanding the entire brain. I know I had Alistair Crowley on for today, that I could not find any video of him. The silent movie I found, if he was in that movie, I didn't recognize him. So we're going to do Anton LaVey. Do this video with Joe Pine. I found a uh, interview, his last interview, and we'll do that one too. Let's get started. Is that the opposite of God? No, because Satan is a God too. Mm -hmm. But what are you then? The Look now, and uh, he turns to talk to him, but it's only his head and neck that turn to talk to Pine. He doesn't, he's not moving his shoulders or his back. And he's at an angle here. I wouldn't say he was submissive to Pine, but he's... The, uh, the dirty pope or what? Oh, I guess you could call me that if you want to say the black pope or the dirty pope or the... the uh... And that's why I won't say he's submissive to Pine, because he's taking the hit from Pine a witty humor and coming back with it uh, advocate of for example the but he's not giving him good eye contact and the reason why I don't want to use submissive is because when you can tongue lash back or take it onto you especially for a man it's not like he would do whatever Joe Pine would say kingdom of night or darkness no one's ever come forth so far and there's that giving him direct eye contact on his truth. And spoken up for the devil. Everybody that's made rules and regulations. And he gives that neck movement into rules. Rules. And the neck comes out. If anything, it would say that is his biggest issue. Far and spoken up for the devil. Every he, didn't, his, he didn't emphasize the devil with that neck movement you know, st stood up for the devil. Buddy that's made rules and But he is doing that with the rules, everybody that makes rules. So it would, be, it would be an insight to the psyche of, it is the rules that have driven him to be where he's at. Regulations concerning the devil or the devil's work, the devil's activities have been people that have been very righteous people, people during crusades, people- Well, I'm not too righteous, but on the other hand, I- That have been very righteous people. And he did it on righteous. So rules, righteousness, are those things that have driven him to where he's at in life now. Well, people during crusades, people... Well, I'm not too righteous, but on the other hand, I think you're a bit of a ding -a Let's face it, either that, or you're selling some kind of a snake oil. You've got very shifty little eyes, by right? It's very close together, too. They tell a story about... It. His attempt at humor, and he's looking at him, looking at him. Which is another reason why I don't want to sit there and say he's submissive. You. Oh, well, yes, of course. What is the story that you'd like to tell us? The story is that I think that the devil has been the guy that's kept the church in business for many, many years. Without him and the concept of evil, where would the church be? Well, where would Notre Dame be if they couldn't play Southern Methodist? That's they got to right. have opposition. Is that that's the point? That's right. You make? They have to have so opposition. So you're supplying, what, a loyal opposition? Well, I'm supplying a much-needed opposition. The word Satan only means adversary, as I said. It's uh, not... Uh, you, you never use the word... You know, the other part of this, he's really trying to have an actual intellectual conversation. Not once during these witty comments have I seen LaVey have like a look of disdain or irritation. Well, I should say I haven't seen it yet. Devil? Devils, of course. Devils are God. The original concept of the word devil is taken from a word meaning God. But this, this name, Anton Zandor LaVey, that's got to be a put on. That's oh, no, be, it's huh? certainly not. I, when I was a young boy, I was... All right, now we're seeing a little bit of irritation. And he just said, when I was a little boy, so it would say that this name was given to him by his parents. And we see that in the irritation because his face fell. Zandor LaVey, that's got to be a put on. That's oh, no, be, it's certainly huh? not. I, when I was a young boy, I was quite... A face fell. Embarrassed about what the S stood for in my middle name. 
because Zandor. Anybody with a S Z A N D O R, right? Right. Now, what does that what does that name mean? Does it have any meaning? Well, it's a very common name in the Balkan countries of Europe, Romania, Hungary. Mm -hmm. It's just like George or Frank would be here. Now, uh, what country do you come from? Transylvania or what? Well, not really. My. It always says something about somebody who can laugh at themselves. Family. Part of my family is from Transylvania. Is it necessary? I mean, he's almost got a sly smile almost the entire time of this interview. And it's in his eyes here and through here. Necessary to kill you by driving a stake through your heart or with just a knock on the head do it? I will never die. You won't? No, of course not. I've made arrangements. He's, he's into his belief system. We're going to skip around after this now. Transylvania or what? Well, not really. My family... Part of my family is from Trump. I will never. How do you like that? A frozen devil, right? Huh? That's a good point. You're going to be frozen. This is a, uh, now that's a great thing, I think. In I want you to see what just happened there. He's talking about I'll never die. And he goes through and makes a joke on it. Oh, so a frozen devil. And he adjusts himself in the chair and lifts himself up straighter to dig into this conversation really trying to make this an intellectual conversation pretty much announcing to the interviewer he is no longer just a passenger in this interview he's now taking the wheel evidently this freezing because i think we all want to live forever i think basically all we and you see the interviewer's response is he drew in his elbows he just stood up and he's taking control i and his response was to draw into himself and to give ground so to speak he didn't give a lot of ground he just gave ground none of us want to die we're like little children that are put to bed before we really want to go to bed and if we i hate to sound like cold water but in our hearts none of us really want to die we all know that death is something you don't know how many people are going to come to your funeral you don't know what your wives your husbands are going to be doing i like how he does that that psyche moment, you know, truthful people as but I'm not a devil worshiper, but I can always respect someone who is honest, no matter what their thought processes are. Wives, he, he did that movement with wives, another one of those trigger points in his brain. It would say another thing that he's passionate on. Afterwards, people don't want to die because they don't want to miss anything afterwards. And they're afraid for what they're... And afraid. You start putting those things together along with what he's saying. Because mentally, his brain is at death. The people in life that you would no longer be with in death. So we see him emphasizing, he's talking about death, emphasizing wife and afraid. And that's when you start putting the psyche puzzle together. Where would his wife be after he died? That's a leap. You can't say that. That's a leap. Well, I'm not saying exactly where his thoughts are on the why. Just know at this moment, his brain, when it comes to death, he's afraid of what will be after his wife. What will happen? Mm -hmm. I don't know. He's not advertising that one. You're going to be missing. So are, are you saying then that you're going to make arrangements to have yourself frozen? If it's at all possible. And we notice after he sat up, I'm never, I'm not, blah, blah, blah. I'm no longer going to be the passenger in this interview. The interview, we, the interviewer is now asking some serious questions instead of his wit. But this is Joe Pine. I'm sure he takes it back. Oh, if it's not, I'll make other arrangements. Of course, what do you mean other arrangements? Well, so I let's take the theories. freezing first now. I could just picture this now. About 10 days after you're frozen, some minister is going to tiptoe over and turn off your electricity. Or bring a blow. And we see why he's doing that. He learned, He leaned into it. So he's, he's, ta he's taking back. We're like, okay, you've had the wheel long enough. It's my turn. Or bring a blowtorch in. Yeah. Well, a blowtorch would be... You'd make and he opened up, taking his ground back. If you make it right at home. What are the other arrangements? Well, there's another make? thing. You see, the concept of the devil is a, a multitude of of uh, interpretations now one of the realms of hell tartarus the lowest of all is supposed to be a very frigid place like a gigantic refrigerator this is where lucifer lives and there's nothing hot at all about it on the other hand the lake of fire that's described in the bible was described to eskimos by christian missionaries at one time and they not having enough heat all wanted to know how do we get there and this is why it never has really 
uh, done too well up there. Well, look, Dev, you don't mind if I call you Dev. Dev, yeah, huh? call me anything you want, as long as it's uh, not obscene. Were you ever a religious fellow? I, uh, I would say not particularly. You're a young man. How I'm a religious you? fellow now, though. How old are you? I'm 36. 36. Who ordained you a satanic priest? I would say probably I received the call. I received the call. How he lifts his head and chin on that. He is definitely in charge. And he just seems like a really... And look at him. He's still semi-smiling through this interview. Oh, you want them to win. You want the bad guys to win, right? Well, I don't say they're necessarily the bad guys or the good guys. It's not up to me because the only people that I would cast a curse or a spell on would be people individually that would sort of get under my skin. The difference between yesterday and today... Very obvious, because the interviewer picks it up. Why are you staring at me like that? Because, after all, uh, hate should be a person. And he kind of adjusted himself and looked away from the interviewer when he was confronted with the body language he just sent to the interviewer, because it was challenged. Anyway, why are, and he leaned into it. Why are you looking at me like that? And he leaned into that confrontation. Personalized thing. Do you, do you hate a lot? No, not really. I am a pretty uh, uh, flexible person. The, the newspaper said you used to play a calliope in a circus. I played a calliope. I was a wild animal trainer. You live with a lion at home, don't you? Yes, I do. Now, is that just a publicity? No. And now he's in a lean-back position. I just thought that was pretty funny to sit there and just... The old stuff and showing you guys and just how people interacted back then. People read each other's body language. That was part of their communication. Nowadays, it's like, I don't know, people walking around confused. Well, I, I'll say one thing. You have a lot of followers. And you're right. <laughs> oh, yes. Uh, you're right about the devil being a god because the Bible clearly states that the devil is the, the uh, god of this world and he's also the prince of the power of the air. So I don't dispute you on this matter at all. My only Are we question picking up a new recruit here? <laughs> <laughs> My only question is this a question basically about death. Personally, I don't think it's a, a funny matter uh, whether you're really sincere in what you believe or whether you are uh, just doing this to gain followers. I mean, it's a pretty serious thing. First of all, uh, everyone dies physically, but you're right. Again, everyone does not die spiritually. And I'd just like to ask you, what do you think is the concept of God? What is your concept of God? What does God do? Is he, uh, in other words, we visualize God as... I wanted you to watch his, or watch his question and not cut it out so you can understand what is going on through his mind. And did you see his eyes and his face drop? What do you think is the concept of God? What is your concept of God? What does God do? Is he... Uh, his face is no longer smiling and he's in search mode. In other words, we visualize God as being the ruler of everything that... He's adjusting his mouth here. His eyes are searching different areas of his brain. ...is good and proper. In other words, his attributes are love and... Uh... He's really got to think this out. Where am I going after I die? It was something he was not prepared for. In his belief system that he has adopted, this concept or the, the, the after never really occurred to him and his almightiness, omnipotence, uh, omnipresence, and so forth. And, of course, we recognize that God has given to this world many wonderful things. Just look at all the, the as far as... And he's kind of taken aback by it. Look, look at him. It's like you can almost see the, the, the minute movement of him going back with the neck and slight back area. Just this guy is hitting him with something he's not prepared to mentally process. And so he's thinking it out as he speaks. Uh, paintings and the uh, literature that's inspired by God, the, the tremendous things that you see in, in all over the world that God has inspired through literature and music and art. What has the devil given to this world along the lines of, of what we consider as good and proper and just? Yeah, what have you done lately? <laughs> well, certainly. And of course, you got Pine over there to lighten the mood. Yeah, you're right. The... Uh, the concept of God has given the world much beautiful music, many beautiful works of art, and certainly I feel God exists, but the name for God, of course, 
is uh, different from many different people. And I feel that God is that force. Whatever God one chooses to pray to or to command in the case of Satanism, rather than pray, I feel whatever God exists should be the God that carries a person along, that carries them through, mm -hmm. that well, makes them a better person, that makes them live a better life and a naturally a more pleasant life. So, and I feel that you have to be kind to yourself, indulgent to yourself, before you know what it's like to be kind to others. True. Now, you brought up one thing about pride. Now, do you think this is uh, a bad thing? No, I think pride is a very good thing. Of you course. have to understand, he likes sin. All right. He answered that question, but it was, it was not really an answer of the question. If Lucifer and God are two different entities, and he just in that question said that it's who, whoever you name your God to be, as if Lucifer is God, the one that created all things. So he really didn't have an answer. And, what, and we saw it in his searching. So the answer that came out of his mouth is obviously an answer that he had to come up with in the few seconds that he had to answer. This is the last interview of Anton LaVey. And I purposely looked for the two different time spans you know one towards the beginning of his ministry and one at the end we're going to see how much he's changed how has life affected him is a good whipping i haven't come forth in a great many years because i didn't want to be relegated to another guest on a tv talk show and we can see now that the happiness factor, the ability to smile through adversity, isn't there anymore. Seems like a, a lot of bitterness. But I can assure you, Satanism is here to stay. He took that deep breath, but I can assure you, Satanism is, is here to stay. And he did that neck movement we saw from the many years earlier in his life to emphasize that stay point. But I can assure you, Satanism is here to stay. Satan can take the form of a beautiful woman. Satan can take the form of... And usually when we see people that have their hands on their face, because his hand is really not giving his head support in the position and in the way that it is at his face. So it's not, you, it's not bearing weight. In this instance, it's more of a uh, hiding factor. He's hiding behind his hand. A sleek animal. An automobile can be very satanic. These things can be anthropomorphized into Satan. A lot of gobbledygook where you stood around in a circle and you used the protective names of Jehovah and Jesus and all that. And uh, I tried it. Oh, Lord knows I tried it, but it didn't work. You know, the one thing, and I wish I had mentioned it in the other video, but we're going to mention it now because his body hasn't changed as far as how it talks in its quietness or its loudness. And have you noticed how still he is in his shoulders, in his core, and even in his arms at times? And he's talking about memories and factual evidence back then. And so I thought to myself, well, if I'm going to call up any demons, if I'm going to get any magical power, if I'm going to get anything going... It would say to me, as we get deeper into that psyche, because he's being very truthful and his body is moving with him as slightly as it is, it is moving with him how still his body is and at times it does not move especially on simple things on the whole not just on a deceptive word but it's deceptive even on the whole of his mindset it would say to me because it's getting into his psyche because he's not trying to be deceptive verbally he's being deceptive on the internal he's lying to himself trying to think of a way to explain it let's watch the body for a minute my way i better get on the side of those guys 
instead of protecting myself from them. I tried it. Oh, Lord knows I tried it, but it didn't. He's going, I mean, his head's moving, and the body is not moving at all. But it's not just his body. It's like the only part of him that is communicating is above his shoulders. The arms are not in communication. The body is not in communication. And it would even seem that the lower part of his body is not in communication. The only thing that there is his head. That's it. So his rhythm in his body is there. It's breathing. It's functioning. But his head has completely... It's like two different entities. It's the head and then it's the body. When we see deceptive people... We'll see the head do one thing and the arm agree, but the core disagrees. Or we'll see the core and the arm agree, but the head and the spine don't agree. Because remember, we have this way for the body and this way for the body. So deceptive people, they have multiple areas of their body going in multiple directions. For him, it is literally like somebody just put an alien head on this body and we are seeing two different I don't want to say anything that would weird just let's just say two different things then that was probably a really long-winded explanation I apologize but it is so rare to see this it needed a platform it really needed a platform of somebody who is lying to themselves and is convincing themselves to where his body has literally split there's the head and then there's the rest of everything else he's playing I don't even know what you call this. He's got like one, two, three, four, five um, keyboards. But he's playing it. I want you to watch again his body. The head is moving. It's got a lot of movement. It can freely move. I, I, that's another word for it. His head moves much more freer. His body other in the hand is something that is in music and it is so stiff here it's like the hands are freely moving but this is very very stiff almost like a marionette it's like the strings that are pulled the tendons through here for the fingers that's all that is reacting up here the shoulder movement as it goes up is from the tendon movement here from the fingers to this forearm if you know anything about biology you will understand what I'm talking about and of course it's making this react but this is not reacting to the flow of the music it is literally it's like the tendons are the only things forcing that to move And you saw what he did that last moment. And he, he did that move on that first interview too at the beginning. Like a very slow, deliberate movement he does with his arm. It goes up and then it comes down. Let's see if we can go back to that. That movement right there. Very slow. It's very deliberate. You know, he would have been a really great study as far as what's going on upstairs now's the time for my opinion I almost think you know in pointing all that out that he was possessed and yeah he's a devil worshiper and you can sit there and go well duh but to actually sit there and see it you know a lot of people sit there and I've dealt with a crazy sister and at times I do believe she was possessed but for him it's kind of like a long term thing and much more as if it's in control. I think we just went to the other side of YouTube. Holy cow. The obviously worshiping the devil is not very good for your body. He went from a very happy, laid back individual to a very bitter old man. And it did not do good for his features. Well, if you liked it, leave a like. If you like the content, please subscribe. Thanks for watching.